Hey everyone, this is Marcus Lewis, and I'm here to show you a new way of running NewPick HTMs. And it looks something like this. Now what you see here is a browser front end talking to a server that's running NewPick. This experience right here, watching a command prompt and a data output, is how people run HTMs today. There's a lot that's good about this, but I think there's also a blind spot. And we start to cover this blind spot with something like this. Now before I show you more, I'll give you some context. This leaves out a few details, but it should work. So this environment, known as ComportexViz, is a way to see an HTM run. It aims to be one of your main tools for making sense of what your HTM is doing. Over time, it's gotten a lot of mileage and a sort of feedback loop of design tweaks. So I'm psyched to bring it to NewPick. I should mention, that you should click this help button. We tried to make this help section good and parts of this tool definitely have a learning curve and we're actually okay with that. The tool aims to be useful to people who already know how to use it. So here's a quick overview. Over here you see the input values and this is them encoded into bits and this is a HTM layer. Each of these bits in the layer is a column. These input bits and columns are displayed with time as the left-right dimension. So you examine a single model by going up and down, and you examine it across time by going left and right. You can also get rid of the time dimension and display individual models in 2D. And this looks a little different when you run it. You'll notice the columns are different colors. Red means active, blue means predicted, and purple means both active and predicted. When you click a column, it shows the underlying cells with a similar color scheme. Now, I still haven't shown you a single synapse. So let me draw your attention to these synapse boxes over here. You can see that we've not been saving them. For a system like this to be practical, it has to be fast. And it won't be fast if you have to save the entire synapse graph every time step. The way I solved this with NewPick was by making it easy to toggle synapse saving on and off. And by letting you configure how much gets saved. This is the trick for running HTMs for lots of time steps without totally losing access to synapses. So let's look at them. These are feedforward synapses from input bits that activated this column. And looking at another one, over here you see the distal synapses to columns in the previous time step. Now I think this is a mix of cool and still a little bit disorderly. I'm kind of intimidated by these 2048 columns. Here I want to show you something Felix added that I'm not sure I would have thought of, and that's of using creative sorting. The sorting comes in two flavors. The first is to sort the columns by how recently they were activated. And because we're showing time from left to right, you get this sort of staircase shape, where each step down shows the columns that haven't been active since the reference time step. The other approach to sorting is to build your own ordering. Select a time step and say these are first. Select another time step and say these are second. And so on. You could use this, for example, to watch how a single column SDR repeats and varies over time. And now that we've sorted this, the distal synapses are much more orderly. You can see them all here going to columns in the previous time step. They're not flying in every direction, and they're not shooting off out of sight. So I hope I'm illustrating the point that sorting can give you a useful view on an HTM's behavior. And we're nimble about it, jumping from one reference point to another.
So in closing, I'm excited to welcome Newpick to this party.